The Reddit AMA happened a few days ago and Bethesda developers unveiled some really exciting new features coming live until the end of 2020. Let me show you the highlights. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video! Bethesda has recently unveiled dozens of details about the future of the Wasteland, including brand new systems such as a new event featuring the Wendigo Colossus, a proper pet system, an auto group finder and the legendary perks loadout, finally. For instance, we are getting some new things this summer and many more features are on the way until the end of the year. In fact, they are going to release a new roadmap very, very soon. For now, let me present you 21 reveals, which are the highlights of the Yama event in my opinion, which was a huge success too, by the way. So, let's get started. It has been a while since we saw a proper roadmap for events, just like the ones that came out with the previous DLCs, Wild Appalachia and Nuclear Winter. Now, developers said a new roadmap is coming very soon with exciting reveals, so expect it to be published in the following weeks, I would say maybe around the release of the next patch in May. What will you find there? Probably most of the features they revealed for this summer in this AMA event, which will be featured in this video during the following points. So stay tuned and let's move on. Last week there were rumors that a new pet system might be on the way, since some people on consoles were able to see pet emotes in the Atomic Shop. Now, we have confirmation that the rumor is true, so right after getting companions, we are also getting pets, and I do mean beyond the tameable creatures you can currently get. That shouldn't be too much of a surprise though, since previous Fallout games like Fallout 4 have different pet mods, which allows players to get all sorts of friendly creatures, mostly dogs and cats, but there are also deers and even cockroaches. I can only imagine Bethesda will start low by adding the common dog and cat pets and then maybe add more to the collection over time. Whatever is coming, it's really great news. In general, the community is loving the new ally system which introduced 5 new companions, but something a lot of people have been requesting is the ability to change their ally clothes, so they don't all look the same. A little bit of customization doesn't hurt anyone, right? It would also create the illusion that each player has a unique companion, well, in a way, since they would end up looking different. Anyhow, Bethesda has confirmed that this option will be added to the game very soon, next month, so it might be coming with the next patch already. You will be able to dress your companion with all the costumes you have found in the wasteland, Wow! Well, I don't know if they were planning to do this before the feedback, if not, then that was really quick. You might be able to change your companion's clothes soon, but you won't be able to spawn more than one at a time. During the MA event, developers made it clear that there are a lot of limitations to allow players to spawn several NPCs at their camps. It comes at a heavy cost. As such, this feature will not come live anytime soon. I know most of you would love to see more than one NPC at your camp, but you should remember that not too long ago human NPCs weren't even part of the game, so be happy with what you have right now. Talking about companions, it seems like more are on the way according to Bethesda. We should expect more Wastelanders type of content in the future. This includes more NPCs, new storylines and even more companions. Of course, that will not happen next month, but it's certainly a part of their plans. Also, don't forget that with new NPCs and lore, generally comes new quest lines, so it's a certain hint that more content will come in this direction. Bethesda also said they are focused on the multiplayer and replayability factors, which means systems like the Gold Bullion and Scrip are most likely at the top of their list. 
The Wendigo Colossus is a waste of time right now. It only has about 6% chance to spawn through random encounters when you nuke certain parts of the map. There's no event or special loot for taking down this new creature. However, things are about to change this summer. Bethesda confirmed that a new event is going to be added to the game, and guess what? It will feature the Wendigo Colossus. I just hope it won't be a seasonal event that lasts one week and then it's gone for a year or so. I mean, if it's a new public event, as rumors suggest, then it would mean we are getting a great alternative to the Scorch Earth and the Scorch Beast Queen fights. As long as they make the rewards competitive, I'm sure it will all work just fine. What do you guys think? The legendary player system is finally coming this summer, or is it now? I'm not sure anymore, we had so many announcements before and we are still waiting for this feature. Anyway, at least we have a new sort of date, which could be real this time or not, I don't know for sure. I have over a hundred pair points in my main character right now and I would like to give some use to them at some point. It's probably going to take a little longer still. Well, at least we got some new details, it seems like you can unlock new slots and these slots will be shared between all your characters in the same account. You can also scrap extra perk cards to level up new perks. Sounds interesting, but I am really C to believe at this point. Finding a team can be very difficult in Fallout 76, especially if you have your friend list quite empty. When Vault 94 was active before the Wastelanders, players complained that finding a raid party was almost impossible. And that's true, I can't blame them for doing so. Now, Batazda is coming with a new auto-party system that will make things much easier to find a party, to do basically anything you want in-game, from events to farming and even exploring. That's a great touch. A little bit too late though, in my opinion, but better late than never. I'm sure it will become more useful in the future if they decide to add some sort of dungeon or even new vault raids. For now, it will mostly boost social interaction and that's alright, I guess. Dozens and dozens of new camp items keep getting added to the game, but the camp budget remains the same. Now, the majority of the community has been requesting a budget increase in order to build all these new items. This is not a new issue, but it has been a persistent one. Thankfully, developers confirmed the budget will get a boost at some point, but let's hope it doesn't take too much longer. It's quite silly to be replacing old items for new ones or picking extreme favorites for your display cases, especially when you like so many different items. Anyhow, Bethesda also said new quality of life things are coming to Fallout 76. Probably more items like the fridge and the scavenger bot. Let's see what's the new addition this time. I'm quite curious, I must confess. Besides a budget boost and quality of life items, we are also getting some fun things for the camp. Dev's words, not mine. Amazing news for builders, huh? Now, there is a lot of space for speculation here. This post from Bethesda could mean a lot of things, such as a new type of item or just an unexpected quality of life entry. Heck, it could even mean that there will be a new feature, such as the wall and floor paints. We don't know what they are referring to, but, well, surprise, surprise, we have to wait a little bit more until the time comes. Hold on to your curiosity. Map expansion is something a lot of us have been waiting for a very long time, especially because the edges of the map are mostly empty and ready for, well, expansion. Seriously, there's nothing going on in there, and that's a shame. Moving on, Bethesda has gone a bit further than a simple map expansion by confirming they are exploring new ways to expand beyond the Appalachian region. They didn't give us any details, just the intent to expand the map in the future. So maybe in a year or two, we will get to play in another wasteland. Hmm, that would be really exciting, don't you think? 
The Brotherhood of Steel was the main faction in Fallout 4 and it has some quests in Fallout 76, but we haven't heard much from them in a very long time. They are more like a minor faction at this point, but that might change in the future. Bethesda has just announced that the Brotherhood has been keeping an eye on West Virginia and us overall. They have said they personally love this faction and want to see more of them. Again, this could mean a lot of things, but it's a clear hint that this faction might get more love in a future DLC. I really hope so, because the Enclave and the Brotherhood of Steel deserves a major DLC, just like the Wastelanders. Don't you agree? The Purveyor will most likely get a companion in May. That's right. I have recently come across a new friendly mole miner at the Rusty Pick basement. I've been wondering what does it mean and now I think I have the answer. During the AMA event, Bethesda said there is a new mole miner coming in May. Figures he's already in game, just waiting to be unlocked. Literally, he is inside the locked area and his name is just Mole Miner, a level 14 friendly NPC. Some rumors suggest his NPC will allow you to modify the legendary effects in your gear, weapons and armor, but I am skeptical. Well, I guess we will find out what is his or her purpose in a few weeks. The One Appalachia Experience was announced at PAX East this year, and we have just received a small update with this Reddit AMA event. This global feature should go live later this year, and Bethesda stated that they are trying to balance everything, not just enemies and their defenses and damage. They are trying to create a balanced experience for every player no matter their level. However, some players are afraid they won't be able to easily kill low-level enemies such as rats and roaches with their end-game gear. And that makes sense, I'm a bit skeptical about this as well. I hope they won't make things that unrealistic. Anyway, devs also said this feature will be added to the PTS later this year to be tested before it makes its way to the official servers. So make sure to test it out before it's too late. We don't want a really messed up feature ending up in the official servers and then everyone is complaining about it. So let's test it all together and avoid something really, really bad from happening. Settlements have been a dream feature for many Fallout 76 players, and now this dream just got some foundation to keep existing. Bethesda is not hiding the fact that there are a lot of limitations, but as they keep expanding and advancing the camp system, maybe the proper foundations for a settlement feature will end up existing at some point. Right now, there doesn't seem to be any specific plans, but A, it's not totally out of question, and that's a great start. Maybe one day players will get to build together and keep the end result just as the player camps. For now, you can do that in workshops, the building together part, that is. Marine combat helmets have been in the devs room since the release day, but cheaters carried this unreleased item out of there and now it is like a normal item. I actually bought this off a player vending machine without knowing it came from there, until you guys told me actually. It's one of these cases where the cheats won over. Anyway, Bethesda plans to make this item official by adding a legit way to get a helmet plan and allow everyone to craft it. They said it will be a reward just like the Nuka Plasma grenades and mines that could roll from the holiday gifts. There's no release time for this one yet, so stay tuned. Some people had high expectations regarding gold bullion plans being tradable at some point, but Bethesda has said that this won't happen since the currency and the plans are supposed to be some sort of personal achievement. You worked for it, you farmed for it, and you got it. That's as simple as it can get. That makes sense, and it's a great system when it works properly. Keep in mind that we had this very same logic for Vault 94 armor sets, and then cheaters found a way to trade the pieces and sell them. I really hope the same doesn't happen again, but it wouldn't surprise me if it does. 
Just remember that these items won't be tradable through legit ways if you ever come across a scenario like that. One of my favorite reveals of the entire event is the respect feature. At long last, we are going to get an option that allows you to respect your attributes all at once. Right now, if you want to make a complete different build, it's really annoying and time-consuming. I mean, it's still possible to do, don't get me wrong, but it can be tedious and frustrating. You can also miss attributes and things get messy. So I am really glad they are finally going to add a proper respect feature that allows you to reset your attributes in one or a few clicks. This gem should go live in the following months, at least according to Bethesda. The Cult of the Mothman got a lot of members now, but not so much lore to explore. Their outposts look scary and fantastic in a way, but again, there's nothing much to do. No quests, no dialogue options, no interaction at all. But that might change in the future, according to Bethesda. There will be further lore and content featuring this faction. We just don't know when to expect it to come live. I would go as far as saying that it will most likely come with a new DLC, because it would be quite a lot of content, and adding NPCs and quests with just a patch doesn't make much sense to me, but who knows? The Fashna Parade got delayed for several reasons, and it's finally coming live next month. The return of this seasonal event comes with multiple improvements. One of them is a more balanced chance to collect all the masks. In other words, rare masks have an increased chance to roll. And it seems like new masks have been added to the event rewards as well, so there's plenty of interest for everyone here. Too bad cheaters can easily duplicate the masks, but that's another story. Lastly, we have a brand new feature that came as a huge surprise to me. Bethesda wants to implement a rotating dungeon system, which will replace the now disabled vault rates with new rewards and so on. We hardly have any details on this one, but it would make sense if they add some sort of dungeon system like the one in the Elder Scrolls Online. People tend to love dungeons, and it's a great way to add replayability to the game. So you can most likely expect some sort of dungeon mode in the existing vaults, or even in new instanced areas. Alright, these were the highlights for the community event Reddit AMA in April 2020. I must confess I got really surprised with the amount of details they unveiled all at once. I guess they are giving us a little taste of what's coming in the future, while making up for the cancelled physical events like E3, where they typically make big announcements. Now, they are forced to use alternative online channels, and I think this event was a huge success, and they should do it more often, for real. It's a great way to directly interact and engage with your community while still telling the world what you want to say. Anyway, I am Marta Branco and I'm really excited about most of these reveals, really. Let me know which one was your favorite and I will wrap things here. Thank you for watching, as usual, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. You can also support me even further if you wish, the links are always below the video. That's everything for now, I will see you guys and girls very very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!